Hello internet, hello and welcome to today's video. Actually today's second video. I don't know. I just felt like talking and creating a video. Which probably is a terrible idea considering my voice is kind of dying at the minute. I don't know, I think I'm getting sick, which certainly isn't handy. But whatever, we're playing an MNI in-house game at the minute. And I don't know, I just really felt like talking. And I don't really have anyone to talk to. I <laughs> you guys don't know this about me, but I don't really have friends. I've got like two, <laughs> which are really good friends. I really like them, but other than that, I really don't have anybody at the school I go to. I just mostly am alone. Sounds good. And that's pretty much like my life mostly alone which Words is very lonely <laughs> who are the four i don't know i just feel like talking at the minute because i don't know what else to do page. i was about to like go and watch wally -E, because i've never seen that movie like entirely i've watched the first like 50 minutes of it and I absolutely loved every second. But I then was like, uh, let's not finish this. And I still don't know why. Because <laughs> I absolutely adored those first, well, 50 minutes of the movie. But I don't know. And then I, I, I was like, uh, I either go watch Wally -E or I just create a video, upload that, and then watch Wally. -E. <laughs> Because I thought Wally -E would maybe make me happy. Because, I don't know, you guys probably just assume that I'm like some kind of happy person. But I'm really not. I really mostly just hate everything. <laughs> I don't know. Just really don't have anything that actively keeps me going. Except for YouTube, obviously. I absolutely love YouTube. Like, I've got, I've just, I, I absolutely love it. I love every second of it, and I wish I could, <laughs> I wish I could do more, honestly. But yeah. Uh, have any of you ever read the Never-Ending Story? That's actually a German book, isn't it? Die unendliche Geschichte. It's a really, it's one of my favorite books, at, actually. And to any of you that don't know what it is about, basically it's a story about a book. <laughs> yes, it's a book about a book and a boy. And the boy like finds this book and then starts reading it. And then, well, everything gets explained. Like like he reads the story of the book, but then, oh, oh not good. Not good at all. And then a lot of interesting things happen to him and inside of the book and then well, everything goes crazy and this is a minor spoiler but whatever the book is like 10 bazillion years old if you haven't read it by now you it's not like you were about to read it but if you were about to read it i'm sorry <laughs> you can't tune out i don't know but in in that book there um at one part of it the entire world starts breaking apart and with breaking apart, I mean literally breaking apart. There is something called the nothing. Just straight up the nothing. And what it is, is, well, <laughs> nothing. Just like, um, before that it was some kind of fantasy book and everybody was just like usual fantasy stuff and actually really, really exceptional fantasy stuff at that. A lot of crazy stuff is going down in that book. But, um, again, at one part of it, it just, everything just starts breaking down. And the nothing is just straight up nothing. Uh, it's a part of the world where once more, there was, once there was something, actually, like, something existed there. But now it's just gone. And they always describe it as not as a black that's not exactly a color it's not the color black it's just that there's nothing to look at it's just that 
absolutely nothing exists there. And it feels like there's something missing. It feels like something w once was there in this world that's gone. And nobody can remember what it was and nobody knows why it's gone. It's just not there anymore. And it's, and it's not like they are active. By the way, they are missing top. Please care. But it's not like there's actively m missing anything. It's just... It's just there's nothing where something should be. <laughs> and... An interesting thing about that nothing is that it has got some kind of force that pulls people into it. So uh, basically once they see the nothing, they kind of want to throw themselves into it. And everything that gets uh, touched by the nothing turns into nothing. Because, well, there's nothing. So what are you touching? <laughs> What's going to happen to you? And in the book, if you um, get in contact with the nothing, you just disappear. Nobody really knows what happens. It's just there's nothing. And I don't know. But <laughs> why am I telling you this? Just like, but I some not not some days. Just like more more like I, I some days only on very rare days I wake up and not have this feeling of. Like, I've got my own personal world inside of me. Everybody has his own personal world inside of me. Like, you don't see... You probably don't see the same red as I do, right? You probably... You probably don't hear the same things I do. You probably just... Everything is a tiny little bit different for you. Or maybe it's majorly different for you. Maybe the entire world is just, like... Entirely different for you than it is for me. Which is cool. That's... <laughs> That's okay, I suppose. That's just how it works, but maybe it's maybe it's exactly the same. That's cool as well. Not gonna charge you. <laughs> but everybody's basically living his own world, and I always I don't know. I I like imagining things as stories because that's actually the reason why I'm this this uh, I figured this out not too long ago. But this is the reason why I really really like. Uh, multiplayer games because in a multiplayer games in a multiplayer game you basically get a new story every single time you play it and the game creates the stories actively well, not exactly the game but you you are part of the story like for example mm, I don't know let's just let's just take one of the most epic games I ever had where <laughs> <laughs> I was playing a scout, right? And my team was just getting utterly destroyed. And the enemy had mega creeps. No, not exactly mega creeps, but they were missing only one. One. Uh, what's his face? I forgot the name of it. One barracks to actually get mega creeps. Uh, top is missing again, please care. But they were only missing one barracks to get mega creeps. And. <laughs> what happened is that I just uh, bought myself some TP boots and a Doombringer and teleported around the map with my scout <laughs> um, and just <laughs> yeah and backed off their base until we got mega creeps and I literally won that game on my own there was my team all my team did do for that entire game was defend while I went into their base and destroyed everything on my own and that's just one of those crazy games you never forget and while playing that game I created a story I created that story I just told you that's nothing the game taught me no it's something that only exists because I played that game that that story only exists because I was part of it and actually my favorite video game series of all time <laughs> Uh, actually, one of the one of the few series where I literally buy everything, every single game, and play every single game of it, except for Awakening. I haven't played that one, but that's because I don't own a f 3DS or DSi or whatever they are called. I don't know. Oh, that's not good. Anyways, oh come on, Silhouette, really? And Revenant? Oh well, nothing we could have done right there. But. <laughs> I think you already know it. 
It's Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem. I freaking adore those games. Now, why why are they so much fun? Um, first of all, like they've got decent storyline and character to it, but that's really not the main point. Like the storyline is always pretty good, but it's not like crazy mind blowing. It's just pretty standard, right? Well, it's not bad, but it's okay. Yes, we are on the same page. But However, something that game does really, really well, all of them do really, really well, is that um, you get a lot of characters that get introduced to you uh, during the, uh, the storyline of the Protection game. And game. every single character is, has got a story to them. Every single character has got some kind of background, some kind of story to it. Every single character is an actual character and feels dynamic. Fight on. Now, <laughs> well, something this game also has is permadeath mechanic. So it's played from top-down perspective. It's a um, uh, what's it called? Uh, like strategy RTS. It's very very slow paced because it's turn-based. It's a turn-based strategy RT no RPG SRPG right? That's what they call it. strategy RPG. <laughs> strategy RTS. Right, turn oh a turn-based real-time strategy, a turn-based strategy, real-time strategy. Oh fuck yeah, America. Anyways, <laughs> my cake. Anyways, a turn-based real-time. Uh, blah blah blah. You get the point, right? It's an turn-based SRPG, and now if a character dies in there, he's dead for good. And there's no way of getting them back. I think Awakening ha now has a mode where you, where your characters are, don't actually have permadeath. But that's that's how pussies. Fire Emblem always had that permadeath mechanic, and that's what made the game so intriguing for me, because characters created their own stories by playing. Like, and the game actually created stories just through being the game it was. A character did not have to have a background story to actually have a story in the game but uh, and you could have that one brilliant character you really really liked using just just because you liked him just maybe you liked this model maybe you liked this background story the game provided you with maybe there was some other wicked reason right however um, that game also uh, made it so that this character could actually be of real value to you because what if you trained him up and what if he now is like literally necessary for you to be able to do anything at all which very much very much could be possible in this game and if if something like that turns out to be the case that's just like absolutely brilliant however because the the, the game does have that kind of permadeath mechanic, you always have to play very carefully with him because you don't want him to lose him. But what if you make a mistake and you lose him? He's just cut forever. But that character left left a kind of like story behind. That character created a story without actually the game doing it for him. He just created his own personal story and that story is always going to change every single playthrough. Which is just unbelievable. It's so great. Fire Emblem is like amazing. You have to play one of these games. If I actually... Um, let me recommend one for you. My favorite Fire Emblem would actually be Path of Radiance for the GameCube. I just felt like it did everything perfect. It's just really, really great. At some parts it might have been too easy. However, I don't really see that as that big of a difficulty. Or that big of a problem. Because... You can't just turn up the difficulty. And since it's an older game, you've got all the difficulties available right from the start. Which is great. I don't see why you should have to wait to play on a higher difficulty level. That's just ridiculous. But if you want to like, play it on hard, really, then it actually is a tough game to beat. <laughs> actually, uh, I have like I've played every single Fire Emblem, except for Awakening so far. And I have beaten all of them on the highest difficulties. Except for two. Two. That's the one for the DS. Which I actually... Actually, that's the one I like the, le the least. It's, it's just not, not that great of a game, if I'm completely honest. It's okay. Oh, I'm dead. But 
It's not 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 the great game. And it's still amazing because it's Fire Emblem. It's just the core mechanics of the game make the game amazing. But storyline, I really didn't like it. I really didn't like the storyline at all, which made me sad. And the characters were also like, meh. Oh, I really couldn't, couldn't stand them, if I'm completely honest. But that game is just impossible to beat on the highest difficulty levels because the highest difficulty level literally is a joke. Like, it's not possible. <laughs> Um, I tried it, I tried it, and I literally grinded my characters for hours, and it still wasn't possible. It just was not possible at all. Straight up impossible, and yeah, that game was a choke. Like, that difficulty mode was not meant to be beaten. I am like, at least 100% sure on that. So, yeah. But... Um, I also haven't ever beaten the first Fire Emblem that came out in Europe. I actually have only played the ones that came out in Europe because I don't speak Japanese. <laughs> so, yeah, but there also is uh, another one. Like, the first one that got released in Europe It's just called Fire Emblem for the Game Boy Advance. And I have beaten that game until the final boss and I just couldn't, like, do it. <laughs> I just couldn't. I just. I still got that save file, and I just can't beat him. It's just not happening. Why am I talking about fire? I'm like. Ah. But yeah, basically that's why I really, really like multiplayer games and Fire Emblem and Binding of Isaac. Like every time you play Binding of Isaac, it just creates its own personal storyline. Like you're never gonna experience that that same game again, which I just love, and it's always something new. But I think the point of that story was to uh, basically explain that everybody has his own kind of world. And every morning, I don't know, I wake up. They are not conceding, are they? Oh well. But I just think there's something missing. There's just something not here. Or actually, <laughs> great. <laughs> Concede world. Oh well, that's actually... That's okay. I don't know if I did anything that game, but... Oh, well. Oh, well. I think I'm gonna go watch Wally now. <laughs> but I don't know. It's just like... Have any of you ever had that feeling where you just wake up and... You think... I've got this world I live in. And it's... It's there. Everything exists. Everything is where it should be. Well, except for this one thing. And you really don't know what is missing. It's just missing. It's just not there. Just... You don't even know if it ever was there. It's just... Not there <laughs> anymore. I don't know if I make any sense. <laughs> you just take a look around your life you just if you if you like literally imagine you are in your world and you could turn your head and you're like yes that 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 right there is part of my world right and you turn your head turn around and you notice oh shit there's nothing there's just one spot where there's nothing and then you're like why why is there nothing There shouldn't be nothing, there should be something there, but it's just just not there. I don't know, I felt like talking. Maybe it's just me. You guys have to know that I really... <laughs> I don't come from one of those, like, happy, fun times, families, like, let's have a dinner together. And then everybody talks about this day and father walks and mother walks as well or whatever or takes care of the children at home or the other way around or something along these lines I, I come from a family where it's like um, I almost killed you and or I almost got killed and <laughs> uh, I'm now going to use my uh, children's to hide behind uh, because I know you're not gonna hurt them it doesn't matter if they are scared to death, but yeah. Or where it's like you get, you come home from um, school, third, fourth grade, and not even halfway home, your mother comes like 
walks up to you and is like, we are not going home. And I'm like, why? And she's like, we are not going home. And I'm like, okay, where are we going? To my sister. I'm like, okay, let's go to your sister. And then we go to her sister, which takes us about an hour. Like my sister was, I don't know, three years, so she was really not relevant. But my, mo my mother, of course, took her with her as well. But she was like, then, then, okay, let's go to her then. If you want to vis go visit her, that's fine. Then we go to her sister. And nobody's at home. And then we go home. <laughs> that's where I'm from. That's what my life is. Anyways, I don't know why I did this commentary. I I just I just felt like talking. A lot of you always ask me why am I wearing this hat. There are actually multiple reasons for that. First of all, I I don't have to wash my hair every day. Like I usually do it, but during the holidays, I just sometimes I'm too lazy to do it. So I just put the hat on top of my head, and nobody notices. Isn't that brilliant, all right? And secondly, it's branding, so you know. Oh, that's the guy with the Timo hat, right? And it's like, yeah, yeah. Or like, basically, do you know Balmy? And then it's like, that guy with the Timo hat? Yeah, yeah, that guy. Oh, yes, of course I know. I get the point, right? It's branding and eventually I can use this as a sign. <laughs> Just like, that's my hat. <laughs> that's kind of me. And also because I, it gives me an excuse to wear it because it really means a lot to me. I already told you the story of that once. I'm not going to tell you again. <laughs> anyway. I think I'm going to go watch Wally now. Have a nice day.